Hi everyone, this is Frederick from P2Design. A month ago, I released my new course, The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender 2nd Edition. And to promote it, I made what I consider my best animated shot so far. Check it out if you missed it. In this video, I will focus on animated character tricks I used to make it as cool as possible. I will make other videos around the production of this short movie, so feel free to drop any question in the comment section so that I can create dedicated tutorials to answer them. Stay till the end of this video to discover a new little Blender feature that will really help you improving your shots. Let's get started. First of all, don't be lazy. Every single pose must be nice. Now it may sound pretentious, so let me say it another way. When I make an animation and I consider it polished, whether it's animated to the camera for a shot or it's a game animation, I want to be able to go through all the frames of the animation and all of them must make sense and ideally look great. Never let the computer decide what's happening for you. That's the most important thing. I see too many beginners animation where we can spot nice key poses, but what happens in between is totally random, because it only relies on automated interpolations. You should go through each of your frame and ask yourself, is it badass, does it make sense, is the body mechanics believable? Often enough, the poses can be improved but also we need more of them before switching to spline. Here you can see how detailed my blocking was for this little animation. I almost have an handcrafted pose every two frames. From there I can switch to spline and polish the animation, but that's another topic. How to create cool poses then? We will definitely focus on action poses more than subtle acting poses, as it's not really what you'll see in that short movie. The first quality of a pose is believability. I'm not talking about realism here, but whatever the style you are going for and whatever the craft, believability is key. Good creature design, for example, always relies on existing animal's anatomy. If you design a dragon and it has grounded anatomy features, it will feel way more believable and convincing. It's the same for our stylized animation. Is this move believable? Is my character balanced? Am I respecting the range of this particular joint? This is where studying body mechanics and practicing a physical activity will definitely help you. And if you don't, make sure you study references for all your shots. The next important feature is the line of action. It's something you've probably seen a lot in any animation related videos, because it's actually super important. You need a clear line of action on any of your poses. It gives a clear directionality to your character pose and make it readable. And you want to control the evolution of that line of action over time. If it varies too much over time without any reason, your animation will lose sense. The evolution of the line of action determines the flow of your animation. And when you isolate it, it becomes obvious how important it is. If you like this video so far, please consider leaving a nice comment, a like and subscribing that will help me a lot. The next feature is the silhouette. To clearly identify the line of action, the character silhouette is key. A very common concept of the silhouette is complexity versus simplicity. If we outline a pose, we should see that one side is very complex in its variations while the other is less busy. And we need as much as possible to be able to identify each features in the silhouette. Is this a foot, an arm? And then you go more and more into details. If it's an arm, where is the hand? Can I show the fingers or a closed fist, etc. Talking about the silhouette, we can also talk about connections in the silhouette. There are times when the natural flow of the animation will make the hand disappear beyond the character in this example. 
but I forced the pose so that we clearly track it from one side to the other of the silhouette. The best way to get better at posing is to practice, and I'm not talking about animation here, but still poses. Take a reference on Pinterest or any reference pack and recreate the pose with your favorite rig and then exaggerate the pose, also known as pushing the pose. I have a dedicated chapter about it in Alive, my extensive animation course in Blender. The next concept is quash and stretch, obviously. It's again one of the principles of animation and probably one of the most important. By the way, I have a cool video about the principles of animation. You will find the link in the video descriptions below. Squash and stretch communicate physicality, but also anticipation and relief. It participates so much in the readability and understanding of your shot. Hence, to the staging. That's why we always study the bouncing ball first. And you heard this before, but everything is a bouncing ball. Once you have good poses with squash and stretch, you can focus on your arcs and spacing. I made a video about the motion path a while ago and will probably do another one soon as we have new features coming up. It's my favorite tool because it allows you to track your spacing and your arcs. And this is a key to a great animation. You need clean arcs as often as possible. And if you break these arcs, it has to be on purpose like an impact, a brutal change in direction, a vibration. The spacing will define the speed at which the features move. Again, check out my video on the principles of animation for more information about it. But basically, what you need to remember is that everything moves in arcs. So in most cases, you want to have a smooth arcs. When animating to the camera, make sure you don't lose track of the point of interest of the character. It's generally the eyes and the hands, but in this shot, it's the staff. Imagine you're not seeing this shot, but a written description of it. Kibali, the monkey, dodges the bullet and then hits the robot in the face with the tip of his staff, swinging to smash the next robot to the ground and finally bend and release it in the face of the last one. The staff is definitely a point of interest. So we give it a special attention, double checking arcs and spacing. When animating to the camera, it's important that you track your arcs from the camera point of view. On this shot, if I track my character's eyes, the most important point of attention on the face, using the classic motion path, it goes all over the place as the character moves a lot in the 3D world. It's impossible to track his eyes position in the camera view. Fortunately, there is a new option on the motion path allowing that. We can now choose to track the motion path in the 3D view, as we did before, or in the camera space, and that's a game changer. Now we can clearly see the path taken by the eyes of my character, that they draw nice arcs with a proper spacing. This little option makes animation tweaking way easier. More improvements are about to come for the motion path, but also for the copy global transform add-on I presented in the previous video. Also, there is so much more to say about this short movie, so make sure you check out the next videos and let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you'd like to learn about. In the meantime, enjoy rigging and animating in Blender. See you!